Something in human makeup compels us to seek out new experiences. We naturally turned our attention to the cosmos after venturing to the furthest regions of both our own planet and its nearest neighbors. However, in order to travel further, we may need to accelerate to a speed close to the speed of light, or 186,282 miles per second. Even so, is this feasible? The main problem is that it's a long way from other stars. Way out in the boonies. One of our nearest galactic neighbors, Alpha Centauri, is still 4.35 light years distant. It would take more than 70,000 years for Voyager 1, a spacecraft that was launched in 1977 and is now believed to be the first to ever leave the solar system to reach Alpha Centauri. The distances between stars are enormous, therefore we'll need cutting-edge technology to travel between them. With NASA's latest equipment, people may soon be able to travel at nearly the speed of light. Is a trip through space at the speed of light now possible? Come with us as we explore NASA's revelation of technology so advanced that it can travel at the speed of light. Obviously, light travels very quickly. Because nothing can travel faster than light, it is the fastest thing in the universe. Since light has a speed of 186,000 miles per second, it can reach the moon in slightly more than a second. In the time it takes you to blink, light may travel from Los Angeles to New York. While 1% of anything may not seem like much, it's still rather fast when talking about light at about 7 million miles per hour. Traveling from Los Angeles to New York would take a little over a second at 1% the speed of light. This is more than 10,000 times faster than a commercial jet. More than three times the speed of sound, bullets can travel at speeds of up to 2,600 miles per hour. The X-3 jet plane developed by NASA is the fastest plane ever built capable of speeds of up to 7,000 miles per hour. In reality, though, that is merely 0.001% the speed of light, however amazing that may sound. Spacecraft travel faster than any other man-made object. They use rockets to achieve the 25,000 miles per hour necessary to escape Earth's gravity. The Parker Solar Probe, built by NASA, is the fastest spacecraft ever. In 2018, it was launched from Earth and used the sun's gravity to accelerate to a speed of 330,000 miles per hour as it sped through space. Incredibly, that speed is merely 0.05% of the speed of light. What is it that prevents humanity from moving at a fraction of the speed of light? Power, in a nutshell. The motion of any item endows that object with energy. In physics, this is known as kinetic energy. Boosting kinetic energy will allow you to accelerate quickly. The issue is that gaining speed requires a great deal of kinetic energy. It takes four times the energy to get the same speed increase. It takes nine times the energy to achieve thrice the speed, and so on. It would take 200 trillion joules to accelerate a youngster weighing 110 pounds to 1% the speed of light. That's equivalent to the daily electricity use of about 2 million individuals in the United States. Could humans make something go even faster? Rocket fuel isn't too unlike gasoline in composition, and all rockets, including the sleek modern rockets employed by SpaceX and Blue Origins, burn it. The issue is that using fuel is incredibly wasteful. Electric and magnetic forces are alternative ways to propel a spacecraft. Similarly, the sun's nuclear fusion process is more efficient than using chemical fuel. Unmanned spacecraft are more likely to achieve light speed than humans. Project Orion, which was conducted in the 50s and 60s, Project Daedalus, which was conducted in the 70s, and Project Longshot, which was conducted in the 80s, all investigated the possibility of using nuclear fission or fusion to power a hypothetical spacecraft. It would have cost too much money and raised too many ethical questions to ever actually launch a nuclear bomb into space. Some scientists have proposed using solar power or powerful lasers to propel interplanetary vessels. Some researchers have proposed playing with the laws of physics by employing techniques formerly thought to exist only in science fiction. Other scientists have considered the existence of wormholes, which would be rips in the fabric of space-time that would allow interplanetary explorers to quickly and easily travel to distant parts of the universe. Despite the fact that wormholes have been theorized, no actual examples have yet been found. They may be too small or their existence may be fleeting due to some strange property of quantum mechanics, according to scientific speculation. 
A scientist was quoted in a 2014 article expressing skepticism about the feasibility of wormhole travel. It would take a long time to leave the solar system and reach a possibly habitable exoplanet, such as those in the TRAPPIST-1 system, which is 40 light years distant, even if we could build a ship that could go closer to the speed of light or play with the laws of physics. Humans have been proposed to be placed in a state of suspended animation, frozen embryos have been proposed to be sent into space, and a generation ship has been proposed to send the descendants of the original colonizers to another solar system. None of these are possible at present with available technology. However, research into suspended animation is progressing. Humans may not be able to survive a trip at the speed of light, according to scientific consensus. Those who argue that people wouldn't feel the acceleration of traveling at warp speed are contradicted by those who say that the experience would be similar to being hit by a beam from the Large Hadron Collider or that the sheer volume of radiation would kill everybody on board. It's possible that humans who travel through a wormhole will suffer the same fate. They'll be torn to pieces by the intense gravity. Yuri Milner, an investor, and Stephen Hawking, a renowned cosmologist, recently announced a competition called Breakthrough Starshot. Hawking's plan is for a tiny spaceship that, given 20 years, could go to Alpha Centauri. Research director at the nonprofit Limitless Space Institute and physicist Harold Sonny White, PhD, spotted something odd and yet familiar in the circular pattern of data plots produced by a recent experiment in late 2020. Casimir cavities are the unexplained holes between small metal plates in a vacuum, and White and his colleagues at LSI's Houston Laboratory were undertaking research for the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, to investigate them. The data plot revealed depleted energy regions between the plates, prompting the latter to move closer together in an apparent effort to fill the hole. This is the Casimir effect, a term from quantum physics for negative vacuum energy density. Some academics believe that it can be used in more realistic energy applications like circuits and electromechanical systems, and that it is helping them grasp the murky physics of microscale structures. However, White observed a recognizable pattern of negative vacuum energy between the plates and around the little cylindrical columns they had installed. Its energy signature was an exact match for that produced by a hypothetical form of exotic matter thought by some physicists to be the key to fast interstellar travel. White says, We then looked mathematically at what happens if we place a 1 micron sphere inside of a 4 micron cylinder under the same conditions, and found that this kind of structure could generate a little nanoscale warp bubble encapsulating that central region. A warp bubble, to be exact. The key part of a hypothetical warp drive that has fascinated physicists, engineers, and science fiction readers for decades. Warp drive, of course, is the stuff of Star Trek legend, a mechanism contained within a starship that grants the passengers extraordinary speed as they travel across space and time. For the average science fiction reader, it's a black box, a simple fictitious solution to the problems inherent in space travel. However, scientists now believe a warp drive could actually operate after decades of theory research and experimentation. Let it be known that White did not create a genuine warp bubble. His research, however, led to a breakthrough. For the first time, a constructible warp bubble exhibited signs of potential for success. Casimir cavities are vacuum cavities between extremely thin metal plates. The Casimir effect or Casimir force occurs when energy is reduced in the space between two plates, causing the plates to attract one another. The fundamental science behind warp technology is remarkably solid. The arithmetic suggests that this could be done, while the details of the device's operation remain unclear. Simply put, a practical warp drive would employ enormous amounts of energy, which can take the form of mass, to generate sufficient gravitational pull to distort space-time in a controlled manner, allowing a ship to speed along inside a self-generated bubble that itself can travel at essentially any speed. Before Gene Roddenberry installed a warp drive in the USS Enterprise in 1966, the concept had been mentioned in fiction on and off for decades. However, the notion was given real-world legs by Miguel Alcubierre, Ph.D., a Mexican theoretical physicist and self-proclaimed Star Trek fan who published a paper in 1994 theorizing that such a drive was mathematically viable. It was the first time the practicality of a warp drive was examined in depth and it generated widespread media coverage. After hearing about his discovery, other scientists were motivated to move the theory of warp drive closer to actual implementations. Scientists often use relative terminology. 
If not for the sneaky qualifier, as seen from far away, Alcubierre's description could sound like he's describing a galactic optical illusion, like passing a vehicle traveling in the opposite direction while both are traveling at 60 miles per hour. Doesn't that sum up to a buck 20? However, the speed from point A to point B is not imaginary. The warp effect only reduces the physical distance between them. In a strict sense, you are not traveling faster than light. From within the bubble, everything appears to be operating normally, and the speed of light is consistent with expectations. However, outside of the safe zone, you're responsible for delivering letters. The very idea conflicts with Einstein's long-accepted theory of general relativity, which states that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, but does not preclude space itself from traveling faster than that. Alcubierre's proposal overcomes this obstacle. The fast expansion of the cosmos following the Big Bang is also thought to be explained by the same concepts. Alcubierre arrived to the conclusion that warp speed was achievable, but that a vast amount of energy would be needed to maintain the warp bubble. He hypothesized that negative energy, like that shown by White's Casimir cavity experiments, might be the key. The only catch is that nobody has actually demonstrated the existence of negative energy. It's the unobtainium of science fiction. Scientists assume it exists, but can't prove it. Space-time may theoretically contract around this unknown object if its power is harnessed by future warp drive designers. Huge material rings housing this energy source encircles a central fuselage in conceptual renderings of warp-capable spaceships. When turned on, space-time itself is warped around the ship. The faster one can warp, the more intensely one must warp. This, of course, is oversimplifying things. In 2001, Instituto Superior Tecnico and Lisbon physicist and professor Jose Natario, PhD, published his own seminal article on the mathematical viability of warp drives. But he worries about the energy needed and other real-world complications. The ability to significantly curve space-time is required, he believes. As the old saying goes, we're talking about something that would be much, much more powerful than the sun. Even Alcubierre has doubts that his theoretical concepts could be applied to create a functional warp drive in the foreseeable future. An ludicrous amount of negative energy, equivalent to nearly 100 times the mass of Jupiter, would be required to propel a bubble one mile in diameter at the speed of light. According to his criteria, the existence of a warp drive is extremely remote. A warp drive would have to stretch space behind a spacecraft and squeeze space in front of it to create a warp bubble that allows the ship to travel faster than the speed of light. However, physicists thrive on difficulty. In the intervening 29 years since Alcubierre's paper was published, other scientists have grappled with its implications, offering alternate strategies for producing the energy using more readily available power sources, discovering novel entry points to the problem, and trading ideas in response to one another's work. They explain the physics by using comparisons to things like trampolines, tablecloths, bowling balls, balloons, conveyor belts, and even music. They have developed their own language. Superluminal travel, not faster than light travel. Then there are the physical and the non-physical, or the important differentiation between unworkable theory and workable engineering. In the meantime, let's get physical, everybody. They do talk a lot about Star Trek, but never about Star Wars. Any nerf herder worth his or her nerf darts knows that Star Wars ships employ hyperdrive, which requires fuel, and not warp drives, which rely on, well, warping. They don't specify what passengers would feel, how the spacecraft's gravity would change when you bring a lot of energy on board, or what would happen if, for example, someone jumped out of the ship while warping. It's likely that bad things will occur, but it's only a guess. Does NASA have a warp drive in the works? Most of this work is done by scientists in their personal time because it isn't financed by universities or government agencies like DARPA and NASA. Eric Lentz, PhD, a physicist and Star Trek fan who is currently based at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in Richland, Washington, first considered the possibility of faster-than-light travel during his postdoctoral fellowship at Göttingen University in Germany during the early isolated days of the pandemic. Although Alcubierre's warp drive appeared to require negative energy, he issued a paper in 2021 proposing that positive energy sources may be used instead. There are a number of barriers to entry to actually being able to build a warp drive, explains Lentz. The negative energy was the clearest, so I worked to dispel it. 
Focusing on the weak energy condition, which he claims follows the positive of energy in space-time, he investigated a new class of solutions in Einstein's general relativity. To overcome this barrier of energy and move faster than light, he came up with the soliton solution, a wave that keeps its form and goes at a constant speed. Such a warp bubble may move along utilizing existing energy sources, however, we lack the technology to effectively harness them. He then suggests that the next stage could be to reduce the energy needs for a warp drive to levels that could be provided by a nuclear fusion reactor. Traveling to and from Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to Earth, using a fusion-powered device might theoretically be accomplished in a few of years, rather than decades or millennia, and could continue to get faster as technology advances. In contrast, even if there were an infinite supply of fuel for today's conventional rocket engines, a round journey would still take 50,000 years. Lentz's paper, like Alcubierre's initial thesis, shook the warp drive community, inspiring yet another group of experts to investigate the problem. Alexei Bobrik, a physicist, and Gianni Martire, a technology entrepreneur, stand out as extremely productive individuals. They published a report in 2021 proposing the possibility of creating a class of stealth warp drives capable of moving at a small fraction of the speed of light. They followed up that paper with another theory earlier this year that describes how a simulated black hole could be used to evaluate the levels of gravitational force required to warp spacetime using sound waves and glycerin tested with a laser beam. The two individuals turned their discovery into a publicly available app in the hopes of hastening the transition from theory to practice. The team is waiting for the technology to pass a peer review stage before publishing details. But in the meantime, imagine the app as a simulator where scientists may plug in their warp speed calculations to see whether they're feasible. While helpful, the tool will only help future researchers save time on their preliminary calculations. There are still galactic-sized obstacles to overcome before hypersonic interstellar travel becomes a reality. Alcubierre is especially concerned about the potential outcomes close to the warp bubble's boundaries. He observes that the space distortion there is so severe that anything that comes close to it will be destroyed. If you collide with something on your path, it would almost certainly be catastrophic, he warns. The quest for efficient high-speed interstellar travel ultimately highlights a more important problem on Earth, how scientists approach problems with extremely long time horizons. White's work on Casimir cavities, for example, is an example of the kind of interdisciplinary exploration that often leads to unexpected results. Despite its vast time spans before basic research leads to galaxy-spanning adventures, warp drive is partially indicative of the multi-decade stasis in physics research that many scientists claim we are currently experiencing. It's difficult to predict if or when humans will travel outside our solar system. It will take a little more time to bring humans there. However, we have already surmounted technological limitations to speed. Going faster than the speed of sound was long thought to be impossible, but today it's routine. We are experts at breaking barriers and will not rest until we have accomplished what we set out to do. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.